Today is Valentine's Day. It is one of Golnara's favourite times of year, not just because a perfume will magically appear in her hands, but because it's a celebration of love. Now I'm excited we're doing this video as it allows Golnara and I to celebrate our love and our love for economics at the same time. That's very true, Matt, and you are right. that You know that I want a perfume when it comes to a day like Valentine's Day. But I have to be honest that you are an absolute nightmare to shop for. I tell you directly what I want and then I'm happy when you go and get that for me. You give me no hints about what you want and when I make suggestions, you just shrug and say sure. So let's discuss the issue of inefficient gift giving on Valentine's Day. is even more frustrating than I noted in the introduction. Let me explain by example. Two years ago, I clearly wanted a specific perfume. I walked Matt into the store and showed it to him and explained the situation and the fact Valentine's Day was near. And I told him that perfume was the gift I wanted. But for some reason, the fact that I provided him all this information didn't go down well even though it lowered transaction costs for him and clearly set his expectations. He did get me the gift in the end, but he keeps saying that he doesn't want to be provided this information and he wants to provide a surprise. As humans, we have a set of wants and needs and in most circumstances, the person that knows how to satisfy this is the person themselves. As a result, I can tell someone what I most desire and if it is within their budget for a gift, they will know that getting that gift makes me happy. No returns, no getting a poor gift and having to pretend to like it, no stress on the person searching for the gift. It's a win-win. The provision of information ensures that there is a more efficient match. Matt takes on a lower cost providing the gift while I receive the gift I most want. Now, don't confuse this for an argument for receiving cash. I do appreciate receiving something where Matt has gone out of his way to pick it up and to select the thing I want. But this issue is not just that Matt complains about buying the things I tell him to. He does not reciprocate in information sharing. What sort of present does he want? What does he like? He provides no information and makes the gift exchange strictly more inefficient. I love him, but this is frustrating. Love you too, Golnara. And I can see your point. But let me explain myself a bit. It is true I'm not the biggest fan of buying a gift where there is a clear instruction or list given of the desired gifts. And I'm also not too keen to state what I want. But to understand why this is the case, it's important to understand what I fundamentally see as the gift. By saying these things are not providing information, I'm not really saying nothing at all. I'm indicating that the characteristics of the gift I desire are different in form to what you are stating. When you point to perfume or a hair straightener, you see value in a specific thing and the role the gift has in providing that use value. Making use of existing information to ensure I maximize that use value is then what you see as an appropriate choice. But I have to be honest, I can't think of what I want off the top of my head and when I do think of something, I usually pick it up myself quickly. As a result, the true value of a gift received to me is the thought that was put into the gift and how it reflects the other person's reflection on what I might value. When I say it's the thought that counts, I'm saying that it is the taking on of these costs of finding information that I value as a gift. And the physical manifestation of the gift is really just an afterthought. In the same way I like providing a surprise, as that gives me the opportunity to spend time and effort determining a present that I think you will enjoy. And the true gift that has been given is the thought of that. The gift here has value because of the cost of finding information and the unique perspective it provides on how the giver views the person, not because of the physical item itself. In this way, gifts are not intended to be practical or desired things, but mementos of a point in time, reflections of love and life 
that you can hold on to as the seasons pass, knowing that the memory has been given to you. So summing things up, just to make it clear this video is tongue in cheek. The only true statement that either of us made here is that it's difficult to shop for me because I don't tend to want to do anything except talk about economics. Gulnara does have another hobby, which is perfumes, and her channel for that is here. The economics content of this video might seem abstract or pointless, but the goal here is just to celebrate Valentine's Day and point out how different people's preferences can be. Individuals all value different things and understand issues differently. One person's irrationality or stubbornness is another person's common sense. Economics is a discipline that celebrates people's choices and their opportunity to live their own life. It is a discipline focused on understanding and appreciating differences. And so on this Valentine's Day, as well as giving those around us love, let's also give them some economics.